So here is my John Muir trail gear list for 2021. Uh, I actually shot the footage of the gear in the days leading up to me leaving. So there are a couple of items I swapped out, for instance, uh, along the trail. I hope it helps with some of your planning. Here we go. First, here's the pack. Uh, I went with the Hyperlite Southwest 3400, uh, and I chose the Southwest over, say, the Windrider because the Windrider has these mesh pockets that are kind of see-through, and I like the privacy of the Southwest pockets. I also chose black over white. For aesthetics, I just wanted it to look good over time, and uh, also I wanted the extra rugged protection that the black version offers. Next is my sleep system. Uh, I chose a quilt over a sleeping bag because I like the idea of its flexibility, especially given some of the temperature changes up in the Sierras. I've gone with the Enlightened Equipment Revelation, 850 down, 20 degrees. It was more than warm enough for the summer months that I was there. I also went with extra wide. Uh, I toss and turn a lot at night, so having that extra space is nice. I loved how small it packed down, how lightweight it was. This is a great quilt. Uh, I'm very happy with it. Inside the quilt uh, at night, I used a uh, Alps Mountaineering Mummy liner. It's basically a, a sleeping bag liner. Some would call it a luxury item. Uh, for me, it was kind of a no-brainer. The way I saw it, I was going to be out in the wild, sometimes a week at a time, getting absolutely filthy. Basically, when I get into a town, I would throw it into the laundry and I wouldn't need to worry about dirt on my sleeping bag. Next is my sleeping pad. Uh, I went with the Thermarest Uberlite in regular wide. Again, I toss and turn a lot at night, so the wide means I won't be falling off my mat. Uh, they do get kind of loud whenever you move on them, but it was comfortable, and as I said, it was light and packed down really small. So ultimately, I was pretty happy with it. I also, by the way, brought my inflation sack to you know save my lungs at the end of a long hike day. So if you're looking to save weight, this is not the place to save it. <laughs> Next comes my pillow. Uh, I tried a bunch of different pillows, including the Climate Pillow X Camp Pillow uh, and the Big Sky Day Sleeper. I landed on the Sea to Summit Eros Extra Light uh, in regular size. Uh, it was super light. I liked the fabric coating. It was actually a really good, versatile pillow. It was more than enough for what I needed. Next is the tent. I've currently got it packed into a Hyperlite small pod. Uh, I've gone with the Nemo Hornet two-person tent. I was weighing up between the one and two person tents. Obviously the one is smaller and lighter, but ultimately I went with the two person because it's a, uh, well, it's a bloody tight tent, the one person. <laughs> and uh, the two person, look, it allowed me to have that little extra space to put my pack inside of. And I'm glad I did. When it was raining, when it was really bucketing down, the pack could have been sitting out there overnight in a massive puddle of water. So I'm glad I went with the two person. It allowed me to have the space I needed inside for my pack and all my things. And it just felt more like a home at the end of the day. The tent's also super easy to put up, uh, except on those super windy days. <laughs> I ended up swapping out the stakes. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with the ones that it came with, but I just decided to cut some ounces with these ultralight stakes. They are the Anygear 7075 Ultralight Tri-Beam Tent Pegs that I bought for like 10 bucks on Amazon. Next time I'd probably just make sure I brought a few more just for extra backup. Of course I have the tent frame separate to the tent that's packed in the pod. I kept the tent frame outside the pack on one of the side pockets and it fit very snugly. It was a great setup. Next is my cook system. For my stove I went with the jet boil because I loved how quickly it boiled water and how it would do it in any weather. That said however I ended up swapping out uh, the jet boil for a MSR Pocket Rocket 2 when I hit Red's Meadows and I made my way into Mammoth. Ultimately, I felt like the jet boil was a little clunky in how it packed into my pack. I recognize that they're a great, great, great stove. But between that and the fact that the plastic measuring cup at its base just kept on cracking, Look, I just didn't want to deal with extra trash and I found that the Pocket Rocket was so small and light, especially once you ditch the red box that it comes in. 
Um, yes, I had to carry a Vargo Titanium 450 travel mug as well. And yes, it took longer to boil the water, but I found it all just a better solution. Next is my Tokes Long Spoon. Uh, long Spoon being super important for freeze dried meals, you know, so you don't have to dig your entire hand into the pack as you're trying to dig out those final crumbs. This, uh, some people might consider a luxury item. I've got the Hyperlite Repack. The reason I went with this is because being on the JMT requires a bear canister and because I had to carry up to a week of food at a time, I needed to repack my freeze dried meals in, a, in quarter Ziploc freezer bags. I've found that by the time your meals get rehydrated in the boiling water, which is sometimes as long as 20 minutes, the meals get cold. So Hyperlite have created this really simple, if not overpriced solution, which is basically designed for quarter size Ziploc freezer bags. Uh, and you pop the meal bag inside, you pour the boiling water in, you close the latch, and it's even got this little flat base to make the meal stand up while you wait. And when the meal is ready, it's also still warm, which is what you want. I mean, is it extra weight? Sure, but you know, after a long day of hiking, the last thing I want is a cold meal. So it worked out great. Uh, and that's my cook system. Next, uh, water filtration. I went with the Catadyne Bee Free. And I chose this over the Soya Squeeze because the flow rate is so great on these things. And I love the idea that whenever I needed it, I had the extra liter of water in the bottle. I also liked how easy it was to clean. I took two one liter smart water bottles to carry all of my water for the trail. And I chose smart water bottles just in case I had any issues with the Bee Free along the way. And I needed to borrow someone's Soya Squeeze or buy one at a resupply place and you know, you could just fit them right on top. It was basically just a redundancy in case. Uh, into other bits and bobs, I have this microfiber ultralight hand towel. I had this just in case, and it turned out to be kind of a godsend, helping me clean up rain inside the tent when there was an absolute downpour. And this thing pretty efficiently cleaned it up. Uh, other uses, handling hot food, wiping down your mug and your, and your spoon after a meal, even sometimes washing your body in a creek, you know, whatever. It was a great thing to bring, and I'm glad I brought it. Next comes my biggest luxury item, my camp chair. <laughs> this was a total last minute addition and I was absolutely on the fence about bringing it. And I know I'm supposed to be roughing it in the wild, but after a long hike day, just the idea of having, you know, a little backside comfort and, and back support, it goes a hell of a long way. I went with the Hillenox Zero Chair. Uh, it's reasonably easy to put together and it's definitely the lightest, sturdiest option out there. Next is my bear canister. They're required on the John Muir Trail. It's heavy, it's bulky. It's the biggest pain in the ass in my pack. Um, but you know, hey, you gotta have it. I went with the BV500. I like that you can see what's inside and I like that you can open the canister without tools, which I know some of the other brands require. And of course my Garmin InReach GPS, which hangs on the outside arm strap of my backpack. This is for emergency situations. It has an SOS button for calling in the cavalry if ever the situation arises. It also allows loved ones to track your movements online, which is pretty cool. And you can text loved ones as well. It's worth mentioning that the features require like a paid subscription, but the peace of mind was worth every penny. Onto clothing. Starting with bottom layers, I went with a kind of a generic brand quick dry shorts. Uh, I only brought one pair. That's pretty much everything that I wore the entire time I was hiking. I also bought some lightweight Patagonia Terrabone jogger pants. These were strictly for camps, you know, just so I'd have something clean to crawl into at the end of my hike day. For my top base layer, I had this REI Merino midweight base layer crew top. It was a last minute addition to my clothing setup. Uh, for the longest time, I just wore a sun hoodie, which I'll show you in a moment. But that thing smells after an hour of hiking in it, let alone a week of no showering. The merino wool keeps the odors at bay and also gives me the option of wearing just a t-shirt if I want to. My main and only top that I'd be wearing over the merino wool t-shirt is this Amazon brand sun hoodie. It's light, soft, breathable. I went with a light color to reflect light and keep me cooler, which is obviously important when you're in so much exposed area like you are on sections of the JMT. Uh, next is my fleece. Uh, I've got the Patagonia R1. It's a little tight but you know after so many Sierra miles hopefully uh, it looked a little more forgiving around the belly. Other than that it's warm, it's comfy, you know it does the job. Next layer is my Puffy, the tried and true mountain hardware ghost whisperer. Uh, super lightweight, packs down nice and small, for my rain shell, I've gone with the Montbell Versalite. Again, super light, very breathable. It has some pit zips for airing. 
I also like that it packs down so small into its own hoodie. It makes it very compact. Then of course I've got my underwear. Two pairs of Me Undies brand. They're what I use every day in life and love them. I have two pairs of Darn Tough Crew socks. I also brought an extra pair of socks for camp, something I can just lounge around in at the end of the day. Another brand new addition to my gear were these Injinji Toe Sock Liners. Uh, they go on underneath the Darn Tough socks. You know, combine that with some hike goo, which I'll show you later, which I religiously put on my feet every morning. The blisters were kind of not an issue. Yeah, I'll say that again. Uh, I didn't get one blister on the whole trail. So it really made the extra work that you'd have to go through each morning for this combo to work really bloody worth it. I have a pair of simple uh, Unigear lightweight running gloves, which I bought on Amazon, super cheap, just for the times I needed to stay extra warm. I really only pack these for my final days, including Mount Whitney. So maybe it would have made more sense if I mailed it to myself in my last resupply, so I wouldn't have had to have carried it. But you know, you live and learn. Next time I'd also buy warmer gloves. These really weren't up for the kind of cold that was up at the top of Mount Whitney for uh, the sunrise ascent. If I was to bring gloves again, I'd pack warmer ones. Uh, I've got my buff, good for keeping the sun off my head, uh, using as a sweatband, you know, cleaning my face, whatever you need it for. I've got a very lightweight beanie. And my sun hat, the Zalia breathable sports cap. I warm the hell out of this thing. It's pretty bloody great for 15 bucks on Amazon, so highly recommended. Uh, and again, I've gone with white to reflect the sun. I bought this head bug net for the notoriously bad bugs on sections of the JMT. Thankfully, I only had bug issues on one of the ascents, which was Selden Pass. So I didn't end up using this head net at all, but you know, better to have it, not need it, right? You know. Next, my trusty shoes. These are Brooks Cascadia 15s. I have a pair of Superfeet green insoles inside them for arch support, and they're super comfortable. I love these shoes. And I brought these foot gaiters to keep the dust out and help with avoiding blisters, but they kind of required Velcroing onto clean shoes. And since my shoes were far from clean, I kind of tried hiking without them. And as I said, I didn't have any blister issues in the end. So about a third of the way in, I ended up mailing them back home when I was on a zero day in Mammoth. One pair of solarized sunglasses, they do the trick. My camp shoes, a pair of Black Diamond Alpine Carbon Cork Trekking Poles. I have some Luco taped wrapped around each in case I need to battle any blisters on the trail, which thankfully I didn't. Honestly, I love these things. They are super tough. They save my joints and easily one of my favorite items on the trail. For my electronics, I ended up going with a large anchor 20,000 milliamp hours power bank as opposed to the smaller and lighter 10,000 milliamp version, which everyone recommended. Because I'm bringing a lot of electronics and just didn't want to worry. It's a little heavier than I'd like, but I ended up kind of needing every morsel of power that it had to offer between my phone, my headlamp, my Garmin GPS. So I'm kind of glad I went with this gruntier size. I also brought this wall charger, so when I was back in civilization, I could charge two things at once. Uh, we've got various cables for charging all my devices, of course. Now, I brought two pairs of headphones, and people are probably rolling their eyes at me. I get it. But I've got these trusty Jaybird Vista wireless headphones, which I wear all the time. They're comfortable. They're noise cancelling, which is great at camp for loud conversations when you're trying to listen to something or watch something. But I also have these regular wired Apple headphones, you know, in case I ran into power issues or had connectivity problems. They weigh next to nothing. They take up no space. So they just sit at the bottom of my pack and I don't worry about them. Next, I've got toiletries. I brought a pack of Cedar Summit Wilderness Wipes for freshening up at the end of every hike day. A little travel toothbrush along with travel size toothpaste, which I resupplied in town as I needed. Uh, a bit of body glide for chafing, which honestly I didn't end up using. And then there's this item, hike goo, which I mentioned earlier. Uh, I would lather my feet up every morning between my toes, under my feet, and then I'd put my socks and shoes on. Uh, like I said, no blisters on the trail, so it turned out to be easily one of the more important items that I brought along, if not a little bulky. My all important insect repellent. I've had this thing almost explode on me on a day hike. So I had it bagged separately in a Ziploc bag to protect against that sort of thing. Next is my poop kit. The juice number two trowel, super lightweight, does the job. Uh, I have my soap. 
I suppose some people would consider this a luxury item, especially since I also brought hand sanitizer. But hand sanitizer, I feel, is more for when I'm about to eat and have regular dirt on my hands. But the soap just seems to be a better option after you've been to the bathroom. So there you go. Here is a little toilet paper, which I initially brought with me, but I kind of quickly replaced it with the Cedar Summit Wilderness Wipes, which uh, were a little more effective and comfy on my backside when I was out there doing my business. That whole kit then gets packed up into this Cedar Summit mesh pouch, which uh, I have sitting on the outside pocket of my pack, easy to access. Next is first aid and repair. Starting with this modified ultralight medical kit 0.5 from Adventure Medical Kits. I went with this because I like that it's small and inside it has this extra layer of protection. I tweaked the original contents though to be less of what I don't need and more of what I do need. I brought a space blanket for emergency situations. There's my extra stash of ibuprofen or hiker candy as it's called on the trail. Some extra Luco tape for blisters. Some earplugs which save me from loud campers talking and snoring at night. For my tight hips, I brought this Rology Ultralight Cork Massage Ball. The idea was to massage my hips and legs every night at camp. It didn't exactly go that way, so maybe I'd leave it home next time, but it's still a great item. Also, I may have been a little paranoid about how altitude was going to affect me, but I brought these altitude sickness tablets which were prescribed to me by my doctor. Thankfully, it didn't affect me beyond, you know, being out of breath on climbs, but it was great peace of mind to have. Again, for emergencies, a couple of hand warmers, lightweight. It's just back up in case I'm in a situation where I need them. Got my repair kits, pack repair, tent repair, sleeping bag repair, and all of that packs away nicely in this 4-litre Cedar Summit Ultra Sill Dry Pack. Next, I have a bunch of bits and pieces, uh, or a ditty bag of sorts, Starting with a pen and paper for journaling. The pad is a waterproof pad. Uh, you can check out a blow by blow of my time on the trail, by the way, on the link in the description below. In addition to the regular pen, I also bought a black marker to write on Ziploc bags for resupplies along the way. Came in handy. I got a compass for backup to my Gut Hooks navigation app, of course. Some duct tape. A couple of elastic bands. You never know. A fire starter cube for emergency use only. A little mini Bic lighter and also brought a handful of weatherproof matches along with their striker pad again as backup in emergencies. Also as backup is this paper map which I ended up referring to daily along with my gut hooks app. Super helpful to have. I'm glad I brought it. My trusty Nightcore 25 headlamp. Super lightweight, easy to use, rechargeable. I didn't have to worry about batteries. It's got a good battery life. Before this, I was using a battery-powered Black Diamond and found that the buttons on it were really complicated to operate, so I much prefer this one. Some paracord, which hangs on the outside of my pack. It's there for, you know, whatever I need it for. And lastly, a signaling mirror, which allows me to, you know, signal for help in emergency situations. Do I need to bring it? Maybe not, but it's so lightweight, and honestly, the peace of mind it brought was well worth it to me. So there you have it. It's kind of a post-review of a pre-trip recording I made. Hopefully you found it useful. As I said before, you can check out my journal, kind of a blow-by-blow -blow of, of my entire trip uh, on the uh, link in the description below. Let me know what some of your gear suggestions are, what works for you, what doesn't. I uh, hope you enjoyed. Stay adventurous out there.